Hello friends, welcome back and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna be talking about and walking through a demo of a landscape edit. Now this coincides with the release of my new course, Lighting the Landscape, which is a mini course for Luminar Neo landscape editing. It's a culmination of all my tips, tricks, ideas, thoughts, processes, all that kind of stuff mushed into one mini course. It is a mini course because it's four raw files, about two hours of instruction, plus a bonus masking video, plus a bonus preset pack, plus a bonus sky pack. And I'm gonna walk through uh, an example of what I'm doing in that course in this video and also give you some idea of what that course contains. Now, if you take a look here, this is an example photo, not part of the course, but this is an example of what you can do in a landscape if you approach it the way that I talk about approaching it in this course. I have a fairly flat photo there. I have a much more rich and vibrant landscape image here. Let me show you what I do with the actual photos in this course to give you an idea about what I'm talking about. Now you may know if you've been here before that when I edit photos, I approach it first with global edits. That's usually develop raw and super contrast for me, but not always as you'll find out in this course. But generally I start with that. Second, I do local adjustments, which involves lots of different masking. And in this course, we cover all kinds of masks. Luminosity mask, color range mask, object select, brushing, linear, radial, all kinds of stuff because that's what, how you fine tune the image. And then many times I'll wrap up the end of my edit with another global adjustment. In this example here, I'm able to take that photo and turn it into this photo based on using those ideas and those concepts, plus a lot of color grading and just a lot of fine tune adjustments to specific areas of the photo. It's really all about taking control of the image so that you get the result that you want and perhaps more accurately, you get the result that you either envision or witnessed when you saw it. Because let's be honest, raw files, this one's fairly dark and kind of flat. They always need a little bit of work. I show you how to bring them to life in this mini course. Now this landscape from Colorado was a beautiful sunset in a beautiful valley with nice pop of fall color in the trees. You're able to bring that to life by using masking and concentrating your edits into certain areas using things like color mask. I use develop again and again and again. It really gives you a lot of control over the image and lets you get the result that you really saw in real life. Another landscape technique I use all the time is HDR. And while this is not a dedicated HDR course, we do take this single exposure put it into HDR Merge, apply masks, color grades, and other specific targeted edits, and end up with that photo. It's a walkthrough of a complete workflow in each of these different videos to show you how you get these kind of results without spending a whole lot of time looking around for tools and experimenting. You can just go straight to the tools that I talk about and get immediate results. So no landscape course would be complete without a monochrome. And if you've been here, you know I love my colors, and I do, but there are some times when you take a photo like this, and you turn it into a monochrome like that and it really catches the eye. That's another example that we walk through in this mini course. I'm super excited and this has really kind of rejuvenated my interest in monochromes because I do love my color, but sometimes, even though it started out as a beautiful sunset in Iceland, you can turn it into a stunning work of fine art with some key moves that I do and I do things a little bit differently with this monochrome than I normally do with my color images. It's all covered in the course and it's gonna be a lot of fun if you end up joining this. Now I mentioned this course also comes with 10 different presets. There's a new landscape collection of presets I made just for this course, not available anywhere else. And these are those presets. You can see as I hover over this image that they're all built just for landscapes, different lighting conditions, and they're great starting point to kind of jump off in your editing journey. These will give you some gorgeous looks. And of course, as you know, you can customize presets, reduce the opacity, things like that in order to control the overall look of the image. So that's included as well. And not to mention, I include 10 sunset skies from my sky mega pack that are gonna give you these amazing and gorgeous sunset skies for you to go apply to your own images. You can experiment with them with the photos that are included here in this course. But of course, they're really built for you to go play with and experiment and add to your own personal creations. That's 10 presets and 10 skies. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Okay, let's get back to this photo. Let me walk through an example of the kind of things that you will learn in this mini course. Here's a base landscape that needs editing. That's the final result. Let me jump into the edits menu, show you what I did to it. Now for me, the first two tools, most of the time, about 99% of the time, are develop raw and super contrast. For me, this is all about adjusting the light, getting the tones right, and kind of setting your base canvas so that you have the ability to move forward knowing what your kind of key starting point is. Now remember, we started fairly dark and fairly blue. So using develop raw and super contrast, I lightened it and warmed it up. 
My next move was to apply structure with a brush mask to certain key areas in the image in order to give them a little bit of extra pop. Also notice that structure adds a little bit of brightening as well, so you do want to be careful with it, which is one of the reasons I encourage you to use it with a mask. After that, I jumped in with another mask to just these two chunks of ice in order to brighten them a little bit, give them a little bit more pop, create a little bit more visibility because they are the key focal points in the image. And I doubled up on that by jumping in the same mask, copied, paste, and applied here with Accent AI to give them an additional little bit of emphasis. I follow that up with a mask in the foreground just to darken that sand because one of the key things of this composition is kind of that dark framing on the bottom and the lighter, more colorful light up above with these two chunks of ice. So I'm going through and making very specific targeted selections in order to control the overall look of the photo, of course, but also to control the viewer's eye because with a brighter foreground like that, you kind of lose a little bit. And if I darken it, it's less visible, it's less likely to draw the attention of the viewer, and you're gonna get more focus on the key things that I care about in this photo, which for me are the chunks of ice, the color, and the reflections of the color in the water. Speaking of color, after that move, I jump into toning, and here I apply a warm color tone overall just to the highlights, and that does hit some of the icebergs like up in here, but I think that's fine because that ties in really nicely with what I do next, which is color harmony which in this case is applied with a mask in order to give me more control and more of a color pop in the areas that I care about, which is primarily the top two thirds of the photo. After that, I do a kind of an unusual move, which is to go back with Accent AI on this iceberg on the left one more time to give it another bit of emphasis. Notice the number is really high on Accent AI, way higher than I would recommend normally going, but for accenting, hence the name, uh, accenting very small areas with a mask and targeting it, fairly specifically, I think you can get away with those kind of moves in any kind of photo. At that point, I was ready to make some overall global adjustments to the light and contrast and slight bit of temperature and tint change. And that was with develop where I come in and I start to finalize the look of my image. I then apply mystical across the entire photo because it gives it a nice moody kind of feel, which is definitely what this scene was like. And at the very end, I decided I need a little bit more pop of warmth in the warmer tones, and that's where Golden Hour is so perfect. So I came in with that, with the mask applied specifically just to certain parts of the photo, and that gave me the ability to go from there to there. A little bit warmer pop and a lot of control over the light throughout this entire process, not to mention a very specific and targeted color grade to certain parts of the image. That takes me from this photo to that photo. And that's the kind of things that I'm talking about and walking through in this mini course. Again, the link is down below if you'd like to check it out. And um, that's how I approach an ed editing for a landscape, how I go about it, the things that I think about and the things that I keep in mind as I'm editing. And that gives me really powerful results that honestly, I'm always super happy with. So before and after, that's how it went in this one. Check out my course if you'd like to down below. I'll be back really soon with more tutorial videos, my friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate the interest, feedback, all the engagement and support. I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care and until next time. Adios.